Tenko has always been a mysterious brand to me. Over the last few years, I've heard murmurs, little bits and pieces about them and their brand and the cult of our brands they have created in that of the blue Zushi and pink Zushi. But like I said, still very mysterious brand. And I remember hearing back in 2021, 2022 about them and the wave that they've been making in California, more specifically LA. I remember I was on the phone with my cutie Josh, who's from New York in the summer of 2022. And he was telling me that I needed to cover Tenko, that they were starting to really pop off over in New York. Now, Josh was a frequent attendee of the Astor Club, where he ended up getting to learn more about Tenko and meeting some of the founders. And, you know, he gave me a little bits and pieces on the company, on the brand. And eventually he mentioned to me that the Tenko were actually the only people from the UK that were popping off in America. And at the time, with the initial launch of the Blue Zushi. And since that conversation, I've been slowly but surely learning more and more about Tenko. And I was especially interested in them, given that they were originally from London. And really, well, I ain't ever heard of anyone from England, let alone London, that was popping off in the States like that in Cali. Plus the fact that half my family is from the UK, and I know I got a lot of viewers that are in the UK. So I, I was definitely super motivated to figure out the story and kind of put the pieces together a little bit. And I really trust Josh and his info slash opinion on up and coming brands, even though he's from New York and you know I'm from the West Coast. But that really being because he came up under the Astor Club and the folks that don't know about the owners of Astor Club, Matt and Ben. Well, those dudes seriously only mess with the top brands and top quality in the entire country slash world. And by the way, the Astro Club video will be dropping sometime next month, so keep your eyes open for that. But yeah, like I said, since late 2021, early 2022, the Tenko had been seriously on my radar, and I was trying to learn more. Now, in the beginning of 2023, I was able to meet some of the main founders while I was out in New York at the Astro Club. I got to learn more and more about the brand, but I didn't fully get, you know, all the different pieces. But in this High Design QP episode, we are going to examine the rise of Tenko and the people behind the brand while examining the strategies and tools the founders of Tenko used to truly pop off this brand on an international and national stage in this new emerging industry. Big ups to all my brothers and sisters over in the UK holding it down and shout out to the folks at Tenko because I gotta say, it seems like we are heading into the Tenko era. Anyways. Make sure to follow me on all social medias, links down below in the description, and make sure to strap in and enjoy the ride. This is the high design of Tenko. Now, founders Stax and Jerry would come together and start the process of building one of the most hyped and sought after brands today in that of Tenko, and what we call sub brands in that of the blue and pink Zushi flavor slash brands. Now, when I said in the opening that the Tenko was a brand founded by folks from the United Kingdom, well, that's only partially true, or at least that's the beginning of the story. Really, it's more of a fusion of the UK and the US, given that one of the founders, Stax, is from London, and the other founder, Jerry, seems to be from the US. But overall, what we can see is that the Tenko and its branding, flavors, and overall company is really, like I said, a fusion of Europe and America. Now, before we jump into the current day successes of the Tenko, we need to go back and explore the upbringing of the Tenko founder Stax and his journey with cultivation and extraction in London as a kid. So Stax grew up in London as a kid, and as the older brother, and you're not really growing up with a father really, the streets raised him and his siblings. Since Stax was about 15 or 16, he had an obsession with the plant. Growing up in London, Stax began growing and learning from older friends of his that had cultivated. As a 16-year-old, he would travel to Amsterdam in a five-hour drive from London to explore the coffee shops and the Dutch flavors and seeds available at these shops. He would have his older friends go in and purchase the seeds for him, until finally, when he turned 18, he was able to go in and purchase the seeds himself. Now listen to this interview that Stax did with the First Smoke of the Day podcast, where he talks about his mentor Steve and the first time he entered into his first High Times Cup when he was around 25 years old. That was his entryway. Now, you know, looking into the yeah. Skittles yeah. market, yeah, exactly. another strain. Yeah. Amazing to smoke. Mm -hmm. Not a great looker. Yeah. You go, go, go for the heart sometimes, you know? But. Yeah. So you're, ba so you're basically all this at the right time, at the right place, and you're crushing fire extracts of sour yeah. and all the red diesels. Just ahead of the curve. Really. And so you start crushing out these cups. So, um, yeah, a few cups started coming around um, and... Everyone was just like, bro, this is this is what you gotta do. You gotta end of these cups. 
Like, okay, cool. Let's let's end the call. Got good people around you, man. Who you, yeah, who you enter in the cups with? Talk about your partners and stuff, and a little bit so, of that, like a little bit of the journey of um, how that the first cup, the first cup that I entered um, was with a guy called uh, older guy that I used to work with back home. Um, his name was Steve. Um, and he shout was, out to Steve, man. Shout out Steve. We hope you hear this shit. And man. he was, I, I was You're like, I was probably twenty five at the time, and he was like fifty two, older man, and he really knew the plant. And being in London at the time, like that guy was crucial. That's that's to huge me. to have a mentor that much older. Yeah, than you. he was a he yeah. was a great key into that, that into the build up. Oh. So he used to um, he would call me up and say, "Yo, what seeds shall I pot?" And I'd tell him, and he would pot wow. them and grow them. But he had like fifty lights or forty lights. Fuck yeah! But that was still crushing. So um, hell yeah! Uh, and he used to, he was like my grower, basically. He was my grower, so everything that he would bring down, he would give to me, and I'd process it into. So I remember the first one was in London, I think, the first competition, um, called the Dope Fiend Cup, I think it was called. <laughs> Holy yeah. hell! And uh, yeah, we well, came first. We came first place. On grimy that one. out there, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jesus. So you, so you took that Crazy one home. Name. So we took that one home, and that with was Steve. And that was with Steve. Steve. OG Steve. Yeah. Sour OG Steve. Steve. Yeah, my yeah. guy. OG um, Sour Steve. And then it went to the um, dope bean cup. Yeah, you win a big needle. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> fucking crazy. So um, where was I? Um, In London. You're with OG so Steve. The, so you guys yeah, took so the cup. Use your grower. And then you know, I'm 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 still there. I'm still still doing my thing. And um, uh, high times. A uh, high times. I think it was 2013. Uh, Higher Times Award came up, which was based in Amsterdam, and I got um there was a a guy that messaged me uh wanting to collab. This was like the probably my first big competition. That yeah, I this is the OG Kings yeah, yeah. Cup. Yeah. Um so I remember uh, connect and they were growers. Um they had uh projects going on all over the place. So um they would come and bring me the material and I did like a few test runs for them. They they were going crazy and they were like we wanna into the competition with you so um we did and we didn't place but i felt that was my uh that was my whole learning curve that was the experience that i needed to break the breakthrough I, I knew where i went wrong before we move on with the content i want to say big thank you to dr smoke for supporting this content right here so if you guys go to drsmoke.com use my discount code lmc you're gonna get 15 percent off your entire order and I highly recommend that, you know, you go to Dr. Smoke, order some stuff. They've got high quality stuff. They've got drinks. They've got all different types of goodies, big brands, right? All different types of brands, 3G, all different types of stuff. They've got all the types of candy, right? All super high quality, all tested, all good to go, all legal, delivered to your door. So go to drsmoke.com, use discount code LMC at checkout, get 50% off your order and also this is gonna help you know support this content here. So if you want to support the show, go try it out. Go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC10, and get 50% off your order. Now let's jump back to the content. So growing up, Stax really was first about extraction. A number of years ago, Stax would form the Tenko company himself, right? But this would be called the Tenko Extraction Company. Now Stax would travel to Amsterdam and travel over to Spain and after attending his first Spanibus. In 2016, Stax would travel to LA and other states in the US to attend different competitions to enter his rosin, PHO, etc. And then eventually, later that year, well, Stax would move to LA. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, see? Stax would link up with different growers and start to establish the Tenko company in LA. And start to meet with different growers and start to build his overall team and build out his whole, whole entire infrastructure. Now. I don't know when exactly Jerry, the other co-founder, and Stax would link up exactly, and when or how Jerry first would get involved with the Tenko, but if we do a little investigating into Jerry, well, it gets super interesting. And like I said, a little investigating because I've never met Dude, I've only met Stax and his brother briefly. And for the most part, this is gonna start to kind of get into more of an analysis and a little investigation. So if we look into who Jerry is, well, He's a pretty uh, interesting character. Just in my little investigation, it seems like he, the first post he makes on his Jerry account, it's a picture of him and the former founder of World Star Hip Hop Q, 
who's a, a legendary figure who unfortunately passed away i think back in 2017 but it that points to potentially that jerry kind of came up working for or learned from q the founder of world star hip-hop which is a for folks that aren't aware world star hip-hop is a very very successful platform would make a lot of sense this you know where potentially jerry and stacks would link up and Stax has all of his knowledge of the flavors. You know, he's, he's also creative himself, but also the cultivation side of things. And Jerry kind of brings in the marketing and the opera, you know, having a lot of connections in LA and, you know, America in general. And so that's like, a, that's like I was saying, is there's this fusion between the UK and America with this partnership with Jerry and Stax. And it also makes a lot of sense, marketing and establishing a brand in the United States in the modern era. And Stax kind of brings on, you know, this creativity as well as this understanding of bringing top quality flavors and, and overall top quality experience. And I think together, along with their team, they have been able to really stick out from the pack in some major, major ways. Now, the big year for the Tenko really is when they kind of launched Zushi, right? The Blue Zushi, which was in 2021. And according to an article done by Jimmy Devine, Devine, it won top honors in the inaugural ZA Olympics. And during that year, this is where we start to see the Tenko and the Zushi start to really come into the legitimate market in LA. So in an interview done by Jimmy Devine with Stax, Stax explains that there was a licensing deal with a group that was in LA that allowed them to vertically integrate and create a whole shop and also have enough space for cultivation. And so that's what Stax would end up doing. And so it showcases, right, that he built up the brand, you know, him and Jerry built up the Tenko brand, built up enough equity there in the streets in a number of other ways. And that allowed them to get a licensing deal to establish a legitimate vertically integrated business in LA. Now, what's also interesting in this interview with that Jimmy Devine does with Stax is Stax talks about how, you know, obviously how they opened up the shop and the vertical integration, but also talks about how his overall approach with the marketing and the strategy of the Zushi, which is like I said, a sub brand of Tenko. And I love the way that they set this up. See, Zushi is like, they roll Zushi out a little bit similar to Runts, but they make some very key changes that it's, I think is very important. See, with Runts, if you haven't seen the um, documentary I've done on them, I highly recommend you go watch that. This will make a lot more sense to you, but they kind of keep it much more controlled. Whereas Runts, there's a bunch of different types of Runts, and there was a bunch of different other kind of sub-brands of Runts that potentially diluted the brand a little bit to a certain degree. Now with Zushi, right, what the approach that Stax and Jerry have taken is that they're really pushing this as, and I quote, they're trying to use the same tactical program as Supreme, and Supreme the streetwear for folks that aren't aware. So Supreme is obviously a very, very famous brand and their whole strategy was all about limiting supply, right? Kind of taking a, you know, a hype beast style approach to rolling out a brand. And that's really all about just keeping super high quality stuff, very limited supply. In this interview with Jimmy Devine, Stack says, quote, I'm trying to keep it as limited as possible. I'm not really trying to blow up the big, big places with Zushi. I already have all that in my other grow rooms. And as much as I want to scale up, we don't want to do it that way. Now, Jimmy would further go on to write, Stax further argued that scaling Zushi could mess up the wave it's already on. And that's the last thing he wants to do, but it's what would happen if he was to go too big with it denting its mystique, right? They really have played the whole mystery element to their branding and their whole approach and the perception that the public has of them really, really well. You gotta give it up to them. And so Zushi, they've slowly been scaling it up. They didn't wanna scale it too quickly. So what they've done is they've done these kind of sub -brands. So they have the blue Zushi and they have the pink Zushi. The first initial kind of sub brand or sub, you know, strain really was the blue Zushi, right? And that started to pop off in 2021. And then, you know, in 2022, 2023, they've started to roll out the pink Zushi. And they've done that alongside with, you know, signing Coyle Ray, a famous rapper who identifies a lot with like anime culture. And, you know, that's the whole branding of Zushi, right? Is it's got the kind of anime style to it, which is super dope. I gotta say the design process, and I've talked to Stax about this, you know, the, the little time I gotta talk with him, you know, he mentioned to me that he's really close with his kind of head designer his creative director and you know they together have you know really made some amazing packaging and overall just the brand of of the zushi has been really really dope 
the aesthetics and it's all it's all super on point everything is super duper on point and i think that's a combination of obviously stacks and then also mixed with jerry and his experience in the streetwear slash overall digital space in, in america now to go back to this article with jimmy divine and his interview with stacks i want to highlight this so stack says quote i try to limit the product to my clients and he's come to grow wary of those big orders he's more concerned with building anticipation than any one big sale he says and quote and just constantly build that narrative there's not that many you know i just kind of keep it limited and never really give anyone too many numbers so that's kind of what sustained us because no one has the control of the information really apart from us to go on and, and further quote jimmy and the interview he did he said quote but it worked and less than a year since the first Zushi drop at Cookies Melrose, the snowball is rolling down the mountain fast. Stax noted that the last year everything went crazy. He explained they'd already had the Zushi a few years before everything went off. He argues that the flower is getting better and the redesign were big factors. Quote, what really happened was obviously from getting her dialed in. Quality was getting better, Stax said. And quote, I think at that time I joined up with my designer, Jerry, and we kind of decided to rebrand Zushi. And that's when we introduced these two characters. It was just kind of organic. And the new look certainly helped keep things fresh, Jimmy writes. And quote, it kind of just gave us this not so childish Pokemon approach where you have to catch them all. And it's got that kind of vibe to it, Stax says. Now, that makes more sense. So it looks like Jerry linked up with Stax. And so... Overall though, like I said, I think that their slow rollout has been really smart. Their controlled rollout has been really smart and their rebrand has been really smart. And they've also focused on specific cities, the big cities that really matter and that, that are like built for, you know, sustaining hype brands like a Supreme. Supreme is a, you know, obviously a very, very famous clothing brand slash you know, just overall accessories brand that, you know, was born in New York City. And there's really only two major cities where streetwear hype beast brands have really prospered and like kind of come out of, and that's LA and New York. And they've been really smart about establishing themselves and making a really strong presence in both of those two cities. LA, they've obviously already established themselves, and now they've obviously moved on to New York, and they've kind of teamed up with key players in New York, like the folks over at the Astro Club. Their overall approach has been really smart. They just, they haven't, you know, jumped the gun, right? They've been slow about their rollout, and they've been aware that, you know, we have to have to limit the supply. Now, other, other brands are aware of this as well. Like, I know people like Doja Pack, like, they don't want to have mass scale. They want to always be known as, you know, limited boutique, super sought after, and they need to control the supply is a huge component of it. They don't want it to get out of hand. What do I mean by getting out of hand? Well, typically what happens with any sort of flavor or any sort of brand is if there's too much volume of it, it will always deteriorate the brand over time. This happens in the streets with different strains, and this happens with streetwear brands, right? It's all about exclusivity. And if there's too much volume, if you haven't seen the video I've done on the Bubba, there's other examples as well, but it's all about limiting the supply, right? So I think it's very brilliant of Jerry and Stax to have controlled this rollout, rebranded it. And I think that they're starting to pretty much amount a new wave, a massive wave. And I think I said, I think we're going into the, the Tenko era. Now we'll have to see the next couple of years how this all you know turns out. But in my opinion, they've been making nothing but smart moves, and, and they've been like I said, they've been they haven't wanted to grow too fast. Like I said, I gotta keep I gotta highlight that for sure. That's a huge component to this overall approach that these two have really made sure to hammer on home. So I think it's been really interesting. And like I said, I think the fusion of Stax and Jerry has been a really really good partnership. I think they both have taught each other different things about kind of where their own strengths are lie. And they've teamed up and, and really have created, like I said, this wave that is is not looking to subside anytime soon. Now, I don't know if they watched. I mean, I know Stax is watching my videos. I don't know if he had watched the Runts video that I you know, had done. I'm pretty sure he probably did. But he has a chance to do what Runts didn't really do well. Now, I explained in, the, in that Runts documentary how there was a bunch of different types of Runts and there was different people that represented each type of Runts, right? So I talked about how, you know, Dollars Up Nero, you know, was Mr. White Runts. I talked about how, you know, there, there's a bunch of different rappers that represented a different type of Runts. And I thought that the potential there was massive and really smart. 
but I think that it just got too diluted and no, no offense to runs by the way big shouts out to everyone that runs those guys are like legends you know but that was and that was coming from a point of view of where like it was a whole group of friends right people they're all different rappers from the from the bay area but what i think what and this is just a prediction of mine just with them doing kind of you know and i might be wrong here but just with them signing coil array to the pink zushi uh, brand they have the chance potentially to go out and find a number of other famous individuals or famous rappers or whatever that may be and assign them and kind of sign them on to different iterations of the zushi you know, maybe there's four or five different iterations of the Zushi and they all are able to market to specific subset groups of, of society. Now that's just a prediction of mine. Don't, don't, don't take it as like, that's a, that's what they're doing. I have no idea. I haven't talked to Stax or really anybody from their camp in, you know, months. And this video, I just wanted to do this analysis slash kind of quick overview of telling their story a little bit. Cause I think that we are seriously heading into the Tenko era. And I think there's a lot to be learned from what they're doing right now and how they're moving. So any aspiring entrepreneur in this, this new emerging industry, I highly recommend. It's important to study people that are doing it right. And I would say Tenko and all the folks over there are doing it right. Before we move on with the content, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Smoke for supporting this content right here. So if you guys go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC, you're going to get 15% off your entire order. And I highly recommend, you know, you go to Dr. Smoke, order some stuff. They've got high quality stuff. They've got drinks. They've got all different types of goodies, big brands, right? All different types of brands, 3 chi all different types of stuff. They've got all different types of candy, right? All super high quality, all tested, all good to go, all legal, delivered to your door. So go to drsmoke.com, use discount code LMC at checkout, get 50% off your order, and also... This is gonna help you know support this content here. So if you wanna support the show, go try it out. Go to drsmoke.com, use my discount code LMC10, and get 50% off your order. Now, let's jump back to the content. So we'll definitely do a you know follow-up video on this, but I wanna do a quick, just a little quick pack, a little high design quick pack for you guys to kind of break down some of the strategy and other things that I've seen. Let me know too down below in the comments. Do you guys have any analysis that I missed that, you know, anything that you've noticed about them that they've been doing really well? I would love to hear down below in the comments. I want to say big shouts out to everyone over at the Tenko. They've been starting to really, really ramp it up. Like I said, I, I tip of the hat. And big shouts out to, you know, I love to see anyone from the UK doing something that no one else from the UK is doing. And that's popping off in the United States. So it's been, it's been dope to see Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you. I hope you guys enjoyed this little QP episode of High Design. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Drop a comment. Follow me on all the social medias. Anyways, this is LMC signing out. Yay.